We are going to make a, a simple circle with a, what's called a trim path. And then we'll do some more advanced trim pathing with a, a zigzag. And we'll make three zigzags in one composition. So we're going to use a little bit of what's called nesting, where you have compositions within compositions on the next video. So this one is just really simple. So I have a, a new project file, and I'm going to make a new composition. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, circle, trim, path. You can call it whatever. But that's what we're doing. And it's going to be HDTV 1080, 29.97 like always. And it's 1920 by 1080. And it can be 10 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever you want to do. We can always change this. Um, so if I say OK, and right now my timeline is 10 seconds. And let's say, man, I don't need 10 seconds. I can go to Composition settings and I can change the, f the thing here from 10 to 10 to, <coughs> excuse me to 5 if I wanted to and it would change okay just let you know that okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my um, my rectangle tool here and there's a little arrow at the bottom right of this little rectangle tool and when I click it, oh, come on, I can choose different things. We're going to choose the eclipse. So I'm going to choose the eclipse. And you're saying, well, how, how are we going to get a complete circle, a true circle? Well, we're going to hold the shift key down while we use this tool. And by holding the shift key, it will only give us a true circle. And to prove my point, I'm going to hold my shift key down and then let go. So if I hold it down, it draws a true circle. If I let go, it doesn't. Okay? So I'm going to make a true circle. Oh. Let me go uh, Control z or <coughs> Command-Z and start over again. Now I'm going to hold the Shift key down. Something like that. Now, I don't... I like to do this anyways. I'm going to grab my selection tool. Anytime I use a tool, I always grab my selection tool. This little arrow right here says selection tool. And I, and I, when, you, when I like to move these, I like to grab the actual part of it. Because sometimes if you move it from the middle and there's nothing, the computer doesn't recognize you're grabbing that thing. So I'm going to put it in the middle here, about there. About there. Okay. <laughs> And then what I, what I like to do is make sure the axis points in the middle. And it's close, but to make sure that it is, I can go to Layer, Transform, Center Anchor Point in Layer Content. So it's Layer, Transform, and anything that's on that layer, its anchor point will, will be placed in the middle. So now, now the axis point or the anchor point's in the middle. I just like to do that. Generally, because that's where you want it, typically. Now, we're not rotating anything, but just in case. All right. So, and, and what I did was to make my, my circle, um, if I had a fill color, if I had a fill color in here, I could go to the word fill, and I wanted to, I wanted to choose the first rectangle, the white box with the red per perpendicular line. And notice it says none, because I don't want an inside color of my circle. So I can click none. And I can also choose the stroke. I can change the, the, how thick it is here. So I'll make, it, I'll make it kind of thick so you can see it like that. OK. All right, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go Control S or Command S. Oh, it wants me to name my project. So this is when you save it in your Google Drive. And I'll call it um, something like that. So you can call it circle. It's, it's, we're using trim paths, and it's a circle. So whatever you want to call it. All right, so you've already saved your project file. All right, now, what we're going to do is this is fine, but we're going to use something called trim paths. And what we're going to do is notice that the layer right now is called Shape Layer 1. I'm going to click that, hit the Enter key or Return key on a Mac, but Enter key. And I'm going to rename it just Circle. Oh, <laughs> circle. Okay, I like to name things because if you don't, it gets a little crazy. And now I know, now I know that the circle is on that layer.
Okay, so what we're going to do is, here's our circle. If you click this little arrow and go down, you'll see the word add here. Add. And we can add a whole bunch of stuff to this layer. So what we're going to do is, we're going to add a trim path. And what it does is it adds trim path right here. Now we haven't done anything with it yet, but when we click this little arrow, it has start, end, and offset. Okay? And then something called trim multiple shapes, which I really don't mess around with at all, but I probably should. Um, so notice to start has a little stopwatch, end has a little stopwatch, and offset has a little stopwatch. The start and the end... We can tell this line where to start from and where to end to on both the end and the start. And the offset, we can change the value of where it starts starts at. So um, the first thing we're going to do is mess around with start. So I'm going to click the, um, I have my scrubber at the beginning here of my timeline. I'm going to click the little stopwatch. Okay. And notice it, it made a little, let me move this scrubber a little bit. Notice it made a little um, keyframe there. And it, the keyframe is at zero. And then I'm going to move the scrubber a little bit and change this value. And because I already set the stopwatch, when I change this value, uh, After Effects will make another keyframe for me. So I'm going to change the value to 100. And now it's going to start at zero and then go to 100. Aha! All right. Now let's try this again. Let's change this value. Let's change this to 100. And you can click it and do it there, or you can, you know, move it up. So let's start at 100. And then I'm going to do, I want to make sure I go to the next keyframe exactly. So down here where we set a keyframe, you have this little dot, and then you have this arrow to the right. If I click it, it takes me to the next keyframe right on it. So I'm going to set the value to zero. And all we did was we just did the opposite. Okay? But pretty cool. All right? Now, the same thing for the end. Let me, let me get rid of these keyframes on start. And notice it took away the clock. And then I'm going to go to end, and I'm going to set the keyframe. Make sure my scrubber is at the beginning here. Set the, set the clock, stopwatch to make keyframes on the end. And we'll, we'll start at zero. I mean, I started at 100% for end. Move the scrubber down a little bit, and then bring this down to zero. And it's really kind of the same thing. Okay? And again, I could take this... Oh, sorry. I could take this, move it to zero for the beginning. And then I, I want to, again, I want to make sure I'm exactly on the next keyframe so I can click this little arrow here. It takes me exactly where the keyframe is. And I'm going to move this, what did it start out with? Oh, zero. Okay. So I'm going to go to 100. Oh, maybe it started at 100. Let's see here. Yeah, so it started at 100. And again, I want to get exactly on the keyframe here. And let me make it, let me, let me take it down to zero. All right, so again, you just have different values you can do. But what if we did them together? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the stopwatch. I'm going to make my scrubber go to the beginning. I'm going to set the stopwatch for start. Notice I have the stopwatch set for end and start. I'm going to set them both at zero. Or actually 50%. I think I can do that here. Okay, so both of these are both of these keyframes right here are set at 50%. And then I'm going to go down here. And let me make sure that I'm on the same 
Again, I always want to make sure I'm on the exact space. And then I'm going to change this uh, to uh, zero. So they start at 50% and they end at zero. Okay, wait a minute. So um, let me make this a hundred here. Oh, come on. Um, so Okay, zero and fifty. All right, what am I not doing right here? Well, shoot. Um, All right, so what I did was I set the start point at 100. I set the end point at zero. I moved the scrubber down here. Let me make sure I go to the exact keyframes here. And then I ended at 50. So basically it starts at the top and then moves down. Just play around with these. These get confusing, as you can tell. And then the offset is getting them, see how it's starting now? Instead of at the top, it's starting on the side. I can choose if I go to uh, 180 for the offset. Now it's going to start at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, sorry about this, but but it is kind of confusing. <laughs> so, and again, again, my my initial uh, start and end. Start is at 100. End is, is at zero on the initial keyframes, and then I moved it down. Let me, again, let me make sure I, like, I go to the exact keyframes here. And then it ends at 50 and 50. And then what I did was I moved the offset from 0, 0 to 0 from, uh, and then 180. And you have it, you have it starting at the bottom and going up. And then if I put, you know, um, what is it, 270? Let's see here. It should start from the side. Yeah, see? So I can kind of pick and choose where I want this thing to start. All right, just go see if you can, again, mess around with the start and end. Um, the main thing is my two start position, my start and end position uh, was 100% for start at the initial keyframe and then zero for end. And then I went down the timeline. And I want to, like, again, I like to click these to make them, make sure my scrubber's right on the exact keyframe. And they end at 50-50. And then I messed around with offset. And offset changes where the, the initial value is, where it starts. All right. See if you can uh, make that. Thank you.